Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think it's working right now. I think it's working. Um, so, everybody's had a busy day today, right? Busy, busy day. So, let's take a moment to uh, drop that day. So, get comfy in a meditative posture. Um, if you happen to use a bolster um, to help with your meditative posture to make it easier, sit toward the front of that bolster, right? Do you need a cushion? I have extra meditation cushion right there. Do you see it? It's right on the uh, counter? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, yeah, sit toward the front, and that will help to put the spine in alignment, right? So, since, since we've all had busy days today, let's just take a moment. Right? To come back, come back to our body, come back to ourselves, and come back to this room. <coughs> okay. So, if you want, you can close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose. And breathe out through the mouth. Mindfully aware of the floor beneath you. Your cushion your body on the cushion. With each out breath, your body settles in a little bit more deeply. You're able to release a little bit more fully. I want you to bring your awareness to your shoulders. You're holding any tension there? Soften and release. Breathe into the shoulders. Bring your awareness now to your chin. Soften and release. Bring your awareness now to your cheeks. Are you holding any tension there? Soften your cheeks. Your eyes, your eyebrows, soften your eyes. Forehead, the top of your head, soften it. Take a deep breath in through the nose. This is your time. For the next hour, you have to pay attention to time. Right? You're free. Free of responsibilities. Hopefully free of cell phones. Hopefully cell phones are off. Um, so we get to be here. We get to be together. And uh, we get to connect that way. And that's the same with you guys over there on Facebook, right? I know it's going to be hard. Um, because you're surrounded by notifications, right? But do yourself a favor for the next uh, hour, just ignore them. Stay present with us, okay? So I'm gonna ask you guys uh, a series of questions. Who wants to be happy? Huh? Everybody, huh? Who wants to be more loving? What about more compassionate, more peaceful, more fully alive, right? <laughs> Who would like to experience a crystal clear mind? Huh? <laughs> right? Right? And then, uh, and then finally, who would like to fully awaken? Right? I think that's all. Right? And whatever that might mean. And the crazy part is, is that like, so that you, you feel those things, right? You feel that there's a potential, right? A potential to be happier, to have a clear state of mind, that there's a different level of peace and connection and authenticity that uh, you can bring to the world. But that there's a potential there, right? In various traditions, they'll say that that 
It's like your Buddha nature. Calling, right? Calling. And that the fact that you can feel it means it's yours. Okay. Oh, come on. Yeah. Grab a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you want to grab her? Uh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's all good. Life happens. We were just talking about how everybody wants to feel happy, clear state of mind, more peaceful, more fully alive. I'm guessing you too as well. Yeah. Right? So we all can feel that there's a potential. Right? There's a potential within us. Right? So, to start, after we settle in, um, we're going to set a sort of aspiration. We're going to do a little bit of an aspirational prayer. All right? I'll say the prayer, and then I'll just sort of listen in, and then we'll sort of move on. All right? I'll wait till everybody's settled in. Can you guys hear me okay? yourselves, come back to being present. We call out now to the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Masters, and teachers of the Dharma of the three times and the ten directions. Please consider us with kindness and understanding and grant us your blessings that these aspirations may be accomplished quickly. May it be that we all swiftly achieve enlightenment for the sake of all beings. Perfect. So we all want to be happy, right? We all want to be happy. We all agree that that is something that we would like. See, the, the thing is, though, is that um, nobody has taught us how to be. We've sort of just muddled and fuddled our way through life. And... Uh, we believe um, things, people, places um, are going to make us happy and we continue to strive after this happy. If, say, you went up to the Buddha and you were like, hey, Buddha, like, I'm feeling you know, maybe a little bit sad, a little anxious, you know, a little bit of stress going on, you know, I feel a little disengaged with life and everything like that, uh, the Buddha would say something to the effect that is that like, oh, like sounds like uh, you're having a case of being human, right? And, and we don't, nobody has told us what that is, right? What, what does it mean to be human? What's the human condition all about? And most presentations of the Four Noble Truths and uh, the Eightfold Path would start out um, but the first thing, has everybody sort of dipped into it? The first noble truth is suffering. Have you guys seen that? Right? So usually the word uh, that they translate as suffering is called, uh, is dukkha. Dukkha. And really, we can look at it, dukkha means that life, as we normally live it, will never make us ultimately happy. That the normal ways we go looking for happiness will lead to dissatisfaction, discomfort, unease, stress, or actual suffering. Dukkha, the easy way is to say life is suffering, but it's not like that. Sometimes life is hard, we have some unease, some stress, discomfort, right? And there's actually sometimes physical suffering that happens, right? And a lot of times that we go about life thinking and believing that we shouldn't have these things, right? There shouldn't be any uh, hurt, any stress, right? And we don't acknowledge those things. And we don't even see that uh, we are hurting, right? And that's like, and the first noble truth is about, sometimes it's easier to see it Right? That everybody is hurting. And because of that pain and suffering, 
uh, they're doing silly, silly things. They're lashing out at their loved ones. They're bumper riding you on the highway. They're screaming at red lights. They're yelling at the person that didn't get their Tim Hortons order right. Everyone is hurting. Everyone is suffering in some way. Right? And that would be, the Buddha would show you that. Right? Yeah. And you too. Yeah. You're hurting in some way. And you're probably, okay, yeah, I know that. I can feel the pain. I can feel the stress. Right? And one of the first noble truths, a lot of people just scooch past the Four Noble Truths, especially the First Noble Truth, because it's awkward, right? Nobody wants to hear about suffering, right? It's not sexy, right? It's not some altered state that you're going to get into, right? But the more and more that you see how people are hurting and how it's that pain, whatever that pain is showing up for them, that, that hurt is driving them whipping them, pushing them, right? And it's making them say things, do things, right? That aren't so noble, right? That aren't so noble. Part of it, so it says Eightfold Path, right? Part of the idea is that, and maybe it might be easier, is if, if you were truly happy, at ease, content, would you be freaking out about the things that you're freaking out about, right? No. So, so what is it then that's, that's making us freak out about these things, right? Well, oh, here, let's just look a little bit deeper. So dukkha, right? right? Here's a bunch of people's different explanations of dukkha. Like an ill-fitting cartwheel, it doesn't run smoothly. The way things never come out quite right. Our lives contain pleasure and pain, gain and loss, happiness and sadness, but what they don't contain is ultimate final satisfaction. Because we're never fully satisfied, we chase after experience. That new shiny thing or experience will only make you happy for a little while. So we chase after another and another and another and another, right? The next relationship, the next meal, the next trip, the next shiny thing. Again, again, over and over and over again. We constantly seek satisfaction. We seek happiness. We seek joy from these external things. Be it people, situations, the new job, shiny car, bigger house, right? And for a little while, those things that make us feel okay, right? Yeah. We get that, boom, that rush, right? We get that rush, right? But slowly, the car gets scratched, <laughs> right? Yeah. You get past that honeymoon phase of the relationship, right? Right? Yeah, it's funny, right? If I only get, get to do this, achieve that, do this, then everything will be fine and I'll be happy, right? And we're constantly shifting from what we don't want to what we want, right? Never quite comfortable, right? Always seeking, always grasping this new next thing, right? And that moves us like to the noble truth number two, right? The reason why we're unhappy, the reason why we have dukkha, unsatisfactory, uh, suffering, right? Uh, however you want to phrase it, is because we want something. We crave something. Ultimately, what we're craving is liberation, is freedom. Remember those things that we talked about at the beginning? Who wants to be happy, clear state of mind, Intrinsic peace, right? That calling. And what we, nobody told us that, whoa, 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 right? Right at the beginning nobody of our lives, nobody sat us down and said, hey, 
look, it's all good and well, right? Car, that trip, some nice clothes. But you know what? It's never going to, never going to live up to what you hope it to be. It's never going to fully satisfy. Nobody tells us that. So what do we do? We want more and more and more and more and more and more. Right? They call it Tana, Tana. And it's, most translations would be uh, craving. But really, it's insatiable craving. Any, any former smokers in the room? Right? Oh, just so. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how many smokes you smoked, was it ever enough? No. 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 You could smoke a whole pack today. Never, never enough. Right? Same with us, but we don't know it. We don't see it, right? And this craving, this constant, I want, I get, I'm sad. Because, ah, uh, oh, like after a little while, right? Oh, I need to go chase that other thing, that bigger promotion, that better car, because that's going to do it, right? And we keep going and going and going and going. And nobody has put the brakes on us and said, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You're just going to be unhappy. So if we go back to point one, everyone is hurting. Right? So when you see them in the grocery line, freaking out on everybody, right? Yelling at you at, your, at work, right? They're, they're missing the fundamental point of that like we're taking life too serious and we're taking the wrong part of life too serious. And that everybody wants something and all of our wants are bumping up against each other, right? Because we all believe that we're separate, right? That there's this dividing line between you and you and you and you and me and you and everybody. And so we gotta we gotta protect. We gotta get our own. <laughs> we gotta right? It's us versus them. Right? And the deeper and deeper you go into the past, or the, the more that it just sort of washes over you, um, the more that that, that idea of separation um, is just madness, right? We are inextricably linked together, bound in ways beyond belief, right? And that, right, that we're all in it. And once we start to see that, right, like these opportunities to come together, right, to come together, Right? helps us start to see, oh, I'm not alone. Right? There's other people. Maybe I can have some support. Right? Because once you, you'll start to see more and more and more, it's easier to see it from when you look at the other people. Right? Well, look at that jerk over there. Right? easier, right? But eventually, you'll start to see how your hurt is coming up, right? How your pain is making you say harsh words, do silly things, and ultimately <clears throat> believe that you're disconnected from everyone, right? And if you have that mentality, of course, pollute the planet, harm each other, right? Of course, right? So the first two truths, right? They're not easy to take, right? They're not, but they fundamentally shift, shift your perspective. When we go into the Eightfold Path, the first 
uh, noble truth. Most, most translators will translate the first noble truth as right understanding. And really, so you know how we were talking about? And when you go out in the world, you'll see it, right? Right view, right vision, right? Because it's like a new perspective that you get to look out at the world with, right? And you see how everyone's selfish grasping, everyone's pain, everyone's hurt, is making them do all this crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Right? And then once you see that a little bit more and more, then you start to see it in yourself. Do I really need that thing? Do I really need to put this much pressure on my friends, family, partner, my team? Right? It, it changes you. Because you see it. It's a new view. Right? Like these other glasses get taken off and these glasses get put on. So there's an, a natural softness that comes about. Right? The more deeply you go into that understanding that everyone is hurting and everyone is hurting is because they're playing a game that they'll never be able to win. Ever. No matter how big a yacht, how much money you get, never, ever, ever, right? And that, if you were awakened, if you were, it's very interesting phrasing that the Buddha used, noble, right? Majestic, right? Royal-like, right? If you embrace that mentality, the would you be doing these type of things? Right? There is a, there's a there's a strength and an honor and a courage, right? Right. So, like, is that are these actions, these words, these thoughts, worthy of you? Right. So, in the third noble truth, anybody have a watch on? I just want to make sure. Seven thirty. Now, so that's a, so the first one, dukkha, into four types, right? Physical suffering, the suffering of unbearable things, the suffering of change, and the great underlying suffering. Now, now listen to this. Physical suffering. This is the inescapable suffering that we experience because we are mortal beings with an impermanent body. In this category is the suffering of sickness, old age, death. This is the pain of stub toes, belly aches, and migraines. Right? So, by understanding that, how often are you mad at your body? Right? The Buddha would say, hey, welcome to uh, the human realm. Very lucky to be here. Right? Very lucky. Very lucky. Because in the Buddhist tradition, they believe in multiple realms and that the only realm that you can get liberation from is this one here. It's like the Goldilocks spot. Just enough pain, just enough pleasure. Right? This Goldilocks spot. So welcome to the human realm. Uh, you have been uh, allocated a human body, right? And just so you know, that human body is prone to sickness, old age, and death. You will stub your toes. You will have zits. You will, you know, all these type of things. Just so you know, so when it happens, you're not freaking out. You're going to get sick. You're going to get old. You're going to die. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, so don't be surprised when any of that <laughs> happens. Please sign here that you understand this. Right? <laughs> and you just, okay. Right? We got, I got a body prone to these things, right? Okay, so as the human realm, uh, you are prone, you have a likeliness that you will come upon the suffering of unbearable things. Uh, this is the suffering of having to put up with things that you won't like, okay? Everyday situations like traffic, your boss, noisy neighbors, people playing the bass music, <laughs> sorry, super loud, right? 
annoying people and not getting what you want. Like that promotion, an ideal partner, that new car. Okay, just so you know, you clear? Okay, good, all right. The suffering of change, okay? So, even when life is totally awesome, and there's going to be lots of awesome parts, it's not going to last. And you'll see people freak out because they expect it to last. But in this orientation program here of being human, just so you know, when awesome things happen, they're not going to last. So don't try to control the people, places, situations because it's just going to make you sad. It's just going to cause you stress. And I'll just go back to category one, dukkha, right? Suffering of change, right? Or if you're stuck in a crappy situation, that's not going to last. Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down. Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down. Okay? So hold it gently, this life. Hold it gently. And finally, since uh, you're here in this orientation session of being human, um, there is what a lot of people don't tell you about, um, the great underlying suffering. Okay? This is that great existential suffering. People have given words to it like, there's got to be something more to life than this. And it's true Though that no matter how many trips we take or how much good food we eat or however much money we make, none of this will ever truly make us feel fulfilled and satisfied. What we truly desire and long for is within. As long as we're not exploring, tapping into and expressing our spiritual potential, we could become the ruler of the world and we still won't be happy. Right? This, this last one, that was the one that got the Buddha. Right? He was a prince. Had everything. And it was crazy was, when he was young, there was a prophecy. Right? The prophecy said, uh, your son, dear king, your son has two paths. Either he's going to be the greatest world, world champion, right? ruler of the world, or he's going to be a Buddha. And of course, the king was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I need my son to be the next king. And he sort of like created this isolation room out of the palace, right? And the Buddha, Siddhartha, he was kept from anything that would disturb that perfect, like everything is perfect, right? Everything was perfect. Right? He had everything, everything he could ever want and wish for. And just one day, like, he just, really? Yeah? Like, you guys know it, right? There's only, like, so many hamburgers you can have until you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Right? And that's what I like. After countless, countless feasts and meals and everything going smoothly, really? There's got to be more to life. And so he went, he, he, he talked to one of his servants to take him outside of the palace. He had never been, right? And he was a adult, he had a kid, a wife at this point. Take me out. They went out, went out on several trips. And what he saw was sickness, old age, death, and then a holy person. And when he was with his charioteer, his sickness, oh, what's that? My, my lord, that's, uh, that's the illness. Well, that happened to me? Yes, my lord, it happens to all of us. Whoa, right? Same thing, right? Old age, death, right? And when he went back, that first there was that existential suffering, and then he, boom, he was able to see this, the human condition. Holy cow, right? And then there's like this bodhisattva heart, like, I need to do something about this. This is not right, right? He saw how his dad 
you know, and his limited understanding tried to protect him because of what he, his father wanted, his father's selfish craving, right? See that? Like how much? Like I sculpted everything around Siddhartha, the, the Sundavi Buddha, to prevent them, right? Yeah. And ultimately he left and went out looking for a solution, right? To how to be free, right? To how to deal with these things, right? Yeah, that's the four, four sufferings, right? And the second noble truth we talk about craving, right? Want, and so here's some other words. Desire, attachment, craving, grasping, clinging, Striving, wanting, searching, seeking, obsessing, needing, yearning, hungering. Right? Oh, or, right? right? No. No. So the third noble of truth says it doesn't have to be like that. You don't need to be caught up in this vicious cycle. And that there's a different way. There's a different way, right? That third noble truth says it's possible. And then the fourth noble truth goes about saying these are the sort of things that happen, right? I break it down. Oh, here, let's go back. To, to craving, right? Because there's a lot we're talking about, a lot of stuff, right? So the three sort of biggies in our life. We're always craving some sort of pleasure, right? Some sort of wanting. We're always looking for something new, or we're always wanting something to stop, right? Grasping and letting go, right? Back and forth, back and forth, right? Back and forth. Fourth Noble Truth, Eightfold Path. Right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right samadhi. Most presentations of the Noble Path will, will translate it like right, but it could be uh, like wholesome, right? Perfect. I just leave it as right because that's usually what what we see, right? Uh, what we see. So a lot of teachings um, just scourge over understanding these first, right? The truth that everyone is hurting in some way. You, me, people out there. Everyone is hurting in some way. And the reason why they're hurting is because they're grasping, clinging, wanting, yearning, trying to fulfill and satiate this desire that can never be satiated. Right? Never be. Right? So you need to understand that. And once you sort of see that, then there's like this disentanglement that starts to happen. Right? Disentanglement, right? Yeah, you could still, right? We all still, like, that's a good thing about, like, we're all, like, lay practitioners, right? So we, we got to go to work. We have to pay the bills, right? We have to do these things. But we can show up to all of this in a different way, right? When you go wherever you're going tomorrow, right? And somebody is, like, freaking out about something, you can now see, oh, they're, they're hurting. And they're probably hurting because they want something really bad. Right? And they don't understand that intrinsically that's never going to make them happy. But they believe so deeply that it will. And because they believe it so deeply that they're going to yell at you to get it, they're going to push you out of the way to get it, right? 
They believe that we're separate from each other, so they need to get it. They deserve to get it, right? Well, you'll see it. You'll see it, how people are pushed, pulled, whipped by it. Right? That's why I say, first it might, might be easier to see this way, right? Out. And when we get a little bit of strength, a little bit of confidence, and we can start to see when we're getting pulled, when we're grasping, clinging, right? right? And that's why I like every, every session we're going to do a little bit of meditation, right? To help calm the nervous system down, calm the body down. Right? So that, same with the meditation, right? Right? And that's the Buddha, he went out and like, he was really like, he was a genius. And he was like super adept at lots of different things, right? And one of them, his first two teachers were uh, meditation masters. And within a short period of time, he got to their level and surpassed them. Surpassed them. Right? And like we see Buddha always, right? Most always in a meditative posture, right? Um, but meditation doesn't liberate, right? It'll help calm the system down because we're jacked, right? We're jacked up. And we want, we need, we got you no know, block, fight, right? Get through traffic, right? Do all this crazy stuff. Right? So the meditation calms, right? And so that the Buddha, like, he, he hit these crazy levels of absorption and meditation, and uh, his teachers were like, whoa, like, you are better than me at this. Right? You're the teacher now. And the Buddha said, no. And they were like, what? What are you talking about? Isn't this what you wanted? He's like, no. This isn't liberation, right? Because he would come out of meditation and be bumping up against life, bumping up against the human condition, and getting frustrated and agitated, no matter how deep, right? He surpassed his masters, the best in the region. And even that still made him get, you know, somebody cut them off in the line when the begging bowls. What the hell? <laughs> right? And he's like, whoa, this cannot be liberation. <laughs> if the only time I'm okay is when I'm meditating. This cannot be the higher states that everybody's talking about. Right? And, right? Because then it turns out to be just the second noble truth, right? Okay craving and going back and more and more and more because it's never enough, right? Because you haven't fundamentally come back to welcome to being human. This is what you're going to bump up against, be working with, right? You need to see and understand, right? So meditation will help us calm the system, but it's going to be illuminating insight that fundamentally transforms you. Fundamentally transforms. But transforms in such a way that it reveals to you, remember those things at the beginning? Reveals to you those innate, inherent qualities that are yours. Right? That are yours. Right? Like, like you know that uh, story, the prodigal son, right? Returned. Right? All of us. All of us are like that, right? What time we got? Well, it's quarter to eight. Quarter to eight. So we got some time. So any questions on that part? It was a lot. I'm right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. But the biggest takeaway, right? Like, like I said, is that a lot of people just will scooch over this part, especially in the Western tradition, right? Like, give me the empowerment, I want a mantra, I want this, that, and the other thing, right? Again, so that's all part of that vicious cycle, right? Right? 
let's take a look. Right? See when you are being pulled out of your noble state. Right? Turn that spotlight. First, you again, take a look. Right? And when you look more and more, you can't help have that, poof, oh my gosh, I have to do something. Naturally, how you show up in the world will start to change because you, you can't help it, right? You can't help it that you see, whoa, man, we just need to chill out, <laughs> right? You can't help but to start to show up different. And then, then the interesting part is then you can't help but to show up different for yourself. Right? To show up different for yourself. Because you're like, whoa. I am getting caught up in these things that truly don't matter. I'm not seeing clearly the way things are. Right? That's what Buddha means awake. Right? Awake. Doesn't mean like some crazy thing. It means awake. To be fully awake, fully alive, right? Understanding clearly, right? Seeing clearly, showing up, right? Showing up. Any questions about it? No? We want to take a break? Was that a lot? Or like, do we pee break, stand up break? No, meditation break? Everybody's good? Yeah? Okay. Let's do some meditation. Okay? So, we'll talk about it again, but like, that's going to be the homework, right? Till the next time I see you guys, right? The next time I see you guys is see, see if you can see how everybody is hurting in some way, how everybody is caught up in something that they want. And then see how you may be hurting in some way. You may be caught up grasping at, clinging at, right? something that you want is really, whoa, like, <laughs> is it like, it's never going to make you happy. So is it really worth it? Is there a different way? And that's the thing, once, you, it, once you're able to let go, release that tension, release that grasp, boom, things start to open, right? You're able to see from a wider perspective. Because you start to be more and more at ease. More and more not triggered in responding. I'm not even responding, but reacting would probably be the better word, right? Mm -hmm. Reacting. Always bumping up, right? And how often you're, oh, I'm happy, I'm sad. I'm, you did this, I'm happy. You did that, I'm sad. I didn't get this, I'm sad. I'm, I'm happy. I'm Whew, it's insanity, man. It is crazy. And more and more, you just, you, you see it and you just, you, got, you can't relate. You can't relate. And people will then like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I need to find somebody to help me be mad about. Did you see what she did? Oh my God. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It's just lunacy, right? It's crazy. Oh, okay, right? Yeah. But the good thing about right, uh, the lay practice, uh, and, and like, I think the time, the, the, it's like the end of the guru, right? And I think really what it is, it's, it's the time of the, of the sangha. Mm -hmm. And the time of that, changing the program from within, right? Because we've had the teachers on the mountaintops and it hasn't worked. Because we're still here. I still have to give people the orientation talk about being human, <laughs> right? Right? And like, so this is the crazy part too, right? Like in the Buddhist tradition, this isn't your first kick at the can. This isn't the first time we've taught mm -hmm. Right? 
This isn't the first time, right? We've been here over and over and over again, right? Over again. And now, maybe we're like, you know what, guys? Okay, let's kick off the robes, get out of the temples, and uh, we're going to infiltrate them because <laughs> it's hard for them to come to us <laughs> right? They're so busy with what they think is important, so <laughs> maybe we need to figure out a way to go to them, right? In the Zen tradition, there's an interesting thing, like there's the ten ox herding pictures, and uh, originally um, it ended in uh, the picture itself was empty, right? So emptiness, nirvana, right? And the Zen master came along and he was like, huh, this series isn't finished. And everybody at the Zen was like, what are you talking about? It's a masterpiece. We've been teaching from this forever, right? And he's like, no, no, no. It's not, no, it's not finished. He's like, after liberation, the Zen master goes back to the marketplace. Because that's where the people are. You can't help it. You're compelled. You're compelled, right? Because you know that the only way is together. The only way is to help. Right? That's what they talk about. It's called the Bodhisattva ideal. As long as space remains, as long as sentient beings remain, so too I shall remain to free us all. And that's a commitment. That's a commitment I made probably a thousand times by now, huh? right? A thousand lifetimes, over and over again, right? And we figured out a way that maybe it's time to work from within, within the system, showing up. Because you'll start to have this come to fruition in your life. And without like being all preachy and oh, you should come to join the sangha and <laughs> do all this stuff, they'll be like, what are you doing? That you're just like calm and happy all the time. That it doesn't matter what's going, like the world could be going to crap around you. And boom, you're good. Right? And you'd be like, oh, this is, oh, this is what I'm doing. And without having to go out there and knock on doors and, you know, hand out pamphlets and stuff like that. Maybe we still need to do that a little bit. But, you know what I mean? Like, your life inspires them because they can feel it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, my. Huh? I need me some of that, whatever you're doing. Because it's working. And what I've been doing over here isn't working. Because I'm... My body's falling apart, I'm getting stressed out, I'm on more and more. That's medication, right? You're always like, you hit a plateau, and then it's never enough. Oh, okay, here's a stronger dose. Here's a stronger dose. Oh, vicious, 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 right? 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 So for us, in the, the lay community, uh, the lay practice, right? You know, but that's a, that's a different thing, like that type of mission. That's a different thing. We'll talk about that later. But, but it, I tell you, it's inevitable. You'll feel it pull, pulling you. I have to. I have to do something. I have to help in some way. Holy man, you know. Mm. Mm, can't help it. Time we grab in, Jenny? You're the timekeeper today. Okay, it's half day. Okay, perfect. Yeah, let's meditate for a little bit. So, let's talk about... Do you guys have any questions? <coughs> Sorry, I'm looking at this thing like an old man, right? Oh, do you have any questions? <laughs> oh, Christina is there. Hi, Christina. So, so we understand 
Uh, right? Like later when we go deeper in uh, to the teachings, right? Like uh, then, like we'll do pointing out instructions, and I'll show you a different way to to meditate um, that you might not have been taught. Um, but right now, um, we're going to use meditation like medicine. Okay. Meditation is going to be the medicine, right? Because we need some medicine, right? Because we're going to get this system, because it's jacked up, right? Jacked up to be engaged with life. And a lot of the life we resist because we haven't been given that intro talk, right? Nobody said, welcome to being human, right? Here's what you need to know. <laughs> life is going to be harder than you described. It's tough, right? Right? So we're oh God, God, it shouldn't be this way. And so we need that setup. Right? So uh, if you have a bolster and you're sitting on the bolster, great. Right? So here's the thing, too. The more comfortable, um, we are very fortunate, thank you, Danny, um, to have this beautiful space to practice in. Um, and it comes equipped, fully equipped with. St- um, and one of the things, right, to help you uh, go deeper, do you need cushions under your knees? Oh no, you're okay? I'm gonna go get cushions to put underneath my knees. Should I bring anybody else back? Yes, yes. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. You know, how many do you have with the uh, smaller ones? Yeah, the small square ones. Yeah. How many do you want? Uh, at least I need two, so probably 10. Vincenzo, are you gonna help? Yep. Perfect. So um, there's different styles. So. Greg is sitting in what we call zazen uh, style. Uh, sometimes this, especially for us Westerners, is not comfortable, right? Um, and surprisingly, even though this looks like it's terrible, <laughs> right? That it's going to be torture for our knees. It's actually really, really good. Is that how you're going to meditate? Yes, yes. Put some put underneath yeah, your yeah, knees. No, I need, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you want to? We know what to, I get something. To show the, your audience. Uh, I think I think it's just Christina and Jeanette right now. Do you guys need? Do you guys want to see Greg? How Greg's sitting? Zazen style. Right on his knees. Right. Yeah, and it's very stabilizing. Yeah, the zazen style, right? Yeah, meditation bench. Yeah, they're really good. Here, let's just here, let's taste. Let's taste a little zazen. If you have a cushion, a bolster, put the bolster like this, not like that. Put the bolster like that. Put it sit right at the like the tip of your butt at the tip, tip of the bolster, right? Turn the bolster like that, Manola. Yes. Yeah, well. Like yeah, this. and then perfect. Yeah, and then sit, it's too hot, no? sit here. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's not stable. You'll be, you'll be stable in a second. Put oh, your knees down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Sit at the tip. Oh, okay. oh, oh yeah. See. It's gonna be hard. Okay. Yeah. Right? And you'd be surprised. Come open, right? Take your hands. Open, turn and open your chest. Bring them in. Right hand underneath. Left hand on top. Thumbs touch. And just drop. So this is the Japanese style. Right? I switch back and forth between the two styles. I just wanted you guys to have a taste. Of that. Maybe this might be better. For you? No. Okay, let's switch it yeah, out. Yeah. yeah. No, I want you. Not, so yeah. Whatever. Just so you know, right? Yes. Yeah, so so and so. The trick, uh, the trick for us here, in the, this meditation to help calm, uh, you'll hear it called calm abiding. Uh, sometimes the meditation that we're doing. Calm abiding. So the thing is, a lot of times people think they need to suffer through their. <laughs> <laughs> Meditation, right? <laughs> well, we have. <laughs> <laughs> we are human, so we have. Right? But the more comfortable I can get you to be, 
the deeper you're going to go into your meditation, right? The more healing that's going to happen for the system, right? Your nervous system will switch over to the parasympathetic and start to cool, right? Cool, right? Yeah. So if you're sitting on a cushion, sit towards the front of the cushion, right? What that does is automatically puts your spine straight, right? And then there's the good thing about, so this, right? It kicks your spine and your chest open, right? And you bring it in, settle in, and then just sort of let them drop. And the upper body uses the lower body as a support platform. Like it sort of falls into it, onto it trusts it to support it, right? Make sense? Make sense? You guys like Zazen's style? Do you want cushions underneath your knees? You're good? Yeah? You don't need the sofa for that. No, it's actually Right? Surprisingly comfortable, right? Yeah, once you find like the, the right height mm -hmm. for it, right, and support, you okay, Dana, with that? Yeah? Okay, we've opened up. This is good too because it opens up our chest, right? We settle in, right? Settle in, okay? Now, so initially, for the first little bit, um, I see a lot of people already with their eyes closed, right? So um, a thing, eventually, what we're going to be doing um, is I'm going to get you to meditate with your eyes open. Um, and you'll find your practice radically transform, your stabilis stabilization, happen quickly? Uh, Mary's <laughs> nodding yes, right? Sometimes it takes a little while to get used to, uh, to meditate with your eyes open. So if you feel com more comfortable now to keep your eyes closed, okay, that's okay right now. Um, the problem with uh, having our eyes closed is that it leads to laxity, tiredness, fatigue. The body's like, oh, Perfect. Sleepy time. I've never tried sleepy time in this knee posture, but I'm down with it. <laughs> right? And especially because we're jacked up, right? And then, look. <laughs> uh, out. <laughs> right? But if that's what you need right now, right? Then tune into that. Let's honor that. And then after we help to build some stabilization in your life, then we'll start to do eyes open, right? Right, do you usually use eyes open or closed? No, eyes open, yeah. most of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I find with just the sleepiness, I'm no. tired guy. Yeah. But if you need that right now, okay? So that's like the most, um, we're front loaded, we're good to go, everybody locked and loaded, got their posture that they feel comfortable with, you got enough cushions? Perfect. Okay, so I'll take our Right. If you want to close your eyes, you may do so. Right. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Breathe out through the mouth. Mindfully aware of the floor beneath you. The cushion. Your body on the cushion. With each out-breath, we allow the body to settle in a little bit more deeply. I want you to bring your awareness to your shoulders. Are you holding any tension there? Soften your shoulders. Bring your awareness now to your jaw. Soften your jaw. Your cheeks. Soften your cheeks. Brows. Soften that area. Forehead. The top. 
top of your head. Soften the head. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Stay aware of the flow of the nature. Cushion, the body on the cushion. With each out breath, the body softens a little bit more. Releases a little more fully. I want you to rest your awareness on that tactile sensation that rise and fall of the chest or the abdomen wherever you feel the breath the most that rise I want you to be aware of the spaciousness of the room. Maybe you can feel a slight breeze of the air on your skin. Hearing cars on the street. And still, awareness is gently resting on the rise and fall. Those tactile sensations of the chest or the abdomen, wherever you feel it most. You may get pulled away by thoughts. It's normal. Come back to that tactile sensation. If you need to shift your posture, you're welcome to do so. The more comfortable you can get your body, the more benefit.
deep breath in through the nose. Breathe out through the mouth. Come back to us here. Come back to us now. So everybody has meditated before, yes? No? No? Good. Very good. Uh, how was meditation? Was everybody distracted? Think about what they're going to binge on Netflix tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I tried the, uh, having the eyes a little open. I like it better. Usually right. I close my eyes. Yeah. Yeah, I did too before. Yeah. I always did it with my eyes closed. Yeah. This yeah. is the first time that I don't get Focused on yeah. So usually, um, so I'll give you a trick <coughs> for stabilization in with your eyes open if you want to try it. Mm-hmm. Um, right? So you find your spot. Good thing about meditating on wood floors, it's easy to find a yeah. spot. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? Find your spot. All right? And then usually, then. Most meditation teachers would be like, okay, that's good enough. Find your spot, stay on your spot. You're good to go, right? And most people, they go, mm-hmm. like they're going to burn a hole in the floor with their mind, right? <laughs> Craziness. And you know what? And they're like, and they're like oh, man. Yeah, no, I stopped meditating. Why? I just I kept getting tired. Yeah, because you're using this, that, what is it called? The prefrontal cortex or the, uh, right? And it, it has a limited amount of willpower to it, right? And they're like, mm-hmm. right? Whoa, no. Okay, so you find your spot, right? Once you get your spot, rest your awareness, and then release into the space around you. Right, Mary? Yeah. <laughs> right? At first, at first when you learned this technique, it was a little, whoa, a little bit wobbly. Yeah. So what we did was, so if you're if you've been meditating with your eyes closed all your life, right? Well, get to have your life blown. Like it's gonna be amazing, right? So if the first sort of step to ease yourself, start eyes closed, right? And then move into like hooded, right? Your eyes are slightly open, right? So then you can get used to being in the space, and then slowly. Open them, right? Find your target, rest, release. Right? Well, I didn't get tired. I mean, the first time, I didn't get tired. Actually, I'm sure I didn't. No, really. <laughs> I didn't know this instruction. Yeah. I just did it. Yeah, you know? oh, oh, that's good. Yeah. You'll, you'll notice. Uh, I did it for a long time with my eyes closed. I don't want to try, right? Yeah. Just did that, but I didn't make any effort to. Yeah. No. And a lot of times, one of the, I think one of the main reasons why, like, even intrinsically, like, we start to close our eyes is because we need rest. Mm-hmm. Right? I'll have people, you know, like, every time I go to meditate, uh, like, uh, I just, I'm falling asleep. Well, then maybe you shouldn't be meditating. Mm-hmm. Maybe you need to go to You're sleep. Tired. You should go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> You're tired. You're tired. Yeah. No wonder you get up. You're tired, right? So, yeah. But you'll notice, with your eyes closed, um, it also leads to fabrication, imagination, dream time, story making, rumination, right? And you'll notice, once, if you switch your practice to this style that we, we just shared, um, like, just like stabilization happens so fast, poof, right? And especially for us, right? So we are fully engaged with the world, right? So we can't, like things are going to crap in, in your work. You can't be like, give me five minutes. <laughs> I need to go meditate right. <laughs> to deregulate my nervous system. I'll be back in a sec, okay boss? No, right? So you need to be stabilized in life. Right? So that you are not shocked by what arises. You are not thrown off, right? That more and more you become the center of the eye in the storm. 
and people will come to you for refuge and safe harbor, right? Yeah. Yeah. So try switching, mm-hmm. right? Switching your practice. Did you start with your eyes closed when you meditated, or did you have uh, a teacher that said eyes open? A teacher said eyes open. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a Zen practice that mm-hmm. comes from this a lot. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, then it, was it wall gazing? Was it, was it? Was I wall gazing? Yeah. To practice? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? No. Oh, okay. No. Okay. okay. We'll try that too as well. Yeah. Now, there's lots, of, lots and lots and lots of different ways to meditate, and we'll explore them. Um, but that sort of that technique that we just did that's a fundamental mm-hmm. right fundamental basis of meditation. at the beginning it is your mind at the very beginning years ago uh, even if you close your eyes your mind is ever your, yeah. your eyes open doesn't matter but yeah. after a long time of practice I, you don't think your mind it's it's easy to get it mm-hmm. <laughs> right away you know mm-hmm. get into calm in a calm state of calmness mm-hmm. So, any questions about the meditation practice? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Eyes blinking, are we blinking when we're doing staring at the spot? I didn't blink. No. Okay. I just want to know. It happens. What yeah. can you do? It happens. Like <laughs> it happens. What can you do? Yeah. I like it, Manola. Yeah. Like if you need to blink, blink. Right? So, so here's the caveat, right? I, like I've taught so much meditation. It's fascinating. This person, like you're talking, you're talking, you're talking, and the, the person across the way, just fascinated by you, right? Not, not moving, like a statue, right? Okay, everybody, let's meditate. Okay, I settle in. Thirty seconds into meditation. <laughs> Whoa! Right? right. So if that's if you start to notice that's you, so then don't scratch the itch. Right? Use the itch as you practice mm-hmm. and watch, right? All of a sudden you're itchy here. Bring your <clears throat> your awareness to and oh no, it's moving. Oh, it's over here. Oh, disappeared. Oh, it's back. It's crazy. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? You have the pain. Oh, I got pain in my knee. Oh. Or do I? Right? You bring your Oh. Oh it was here. Oh now it's over here. Now it's disappeared. It's fascinating, right? life like and that's the thing the deeper we go into into the practice the path whatever you want to call it i'm fascinated with life people yeah because it's amazing right amazing hopefully at some point like that heart burst that bodhisattva moment happens for you i think it has or else you wouldn't be here Mm -hmm. right you wouldn't be here right so right now, right, we're going to make ourselves strong. We're going to get a new way to see the world. That's like, maybe that person, there's, there's Jim, and Jim's always a jerk. So the next time you see that person, <laughs> you're like, oh, I wonder what's going on in Jim's life. That's making him act this way. Because if he was happy... He wouldn't be saying these things, doing these things, acting in these ways. So there must be some sort of something in his life that's hurting, that he's, that he's holding on to so tightly, that he wants so bad that he's not getting, or that he's like working two jobs to get because society has said that you need this, you should have that, right? You start to see, right? Everything, right? So that's why when we go into the next phase, right? The Eightfold Path, right? Eightfold Path. Yeah, most, most people s- translate the first as right understanding. And it's very technical, very dry. And like, no, right? No. It's a shift of perspective, a shift of view, a change of heart that happens. Or else it's never going to happen in your life. Never, right? 
And once, once you start to see a little bit differently, things change of their own accord, right? Of their own accord. It's interesting, right? And that it's not so much that it's a path that we follow, right? It's called a path because we've got to call it something, right? <laughs> but it's more like an interrelated, like, or like a branch with petals or petals on a flower, right? Everything is, everything is related. But really more, it's more like When you're in that space, these qualities, these noble, naturally, right? This time together will help, Ooh, right? It's like the nutrients, right? When you're building a garden, these are the conducive conditions for that to blossom and bloom. Because it wants to. You guys all said it's there. You feel it. You feel it at the beginning. You're like, oh, we know. Potential is there. Right? What time we got? Here we go. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay, guys. Thank you. So let's do this.